Um, so I run the website called the Keith Speaking Academy, um, as you can probably see up <laughs> Yeah, it's on the other side. Um, and also the YouTube channel, um, English Speaking Success, which is maybe where you're watching right now. If you are watching on YouTube, then do please subscribe to the channel. Turn on that um, notification button so you can find out about new videos that I make every Sunday. And also, of course, the live classes that come up, um, well, every Thursday at the moment. Um, some of you may be on Facebook watching now. So if you are, great. Welcome, everybody, from Facebook. Um, if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet and you're looking for some motivation, ideas, language, a community of people really motivated to improve, come and join us. Um, Keith's Mastermind Community for IELTS Speaking. It is focused on IELTS Speaking. That's the, the skill that we're looking at, right? <clears throat> That's my job, is to try and make or help you speak better English, give better answers and get a higher score on IELTS speaking. Right? That's why I'm here. <laughs> Let me turn that off for the moment, OK? If you're interested in the website, of course, um, you can go there and check out. Well, you can see the, the live lessons, recordings, the PDFs for download. There are some tips. Um, I'm adding more and more stuff as we go along, so you can go and check that out as well. Um, I am, just very briefly, going to show you the website so you can realise uh, just where to get the stuff. It's the it's keithspeakingacademy.com, right? Um, you can find out information about the test up here, the format, how it's evaluated, different parts of the test. Um, fluency Gym, if you want some practice for your fluency, more tips that I'm adding on this kind of blog section. Um, you can donate money if you want to help me dedicate more time to the um, well to the live classes and to the YouTube videos. The free live lessons is where you need to go if you want to um, download the lesson notes. Also, you can make a donation here if you like. You just choose your level or you can decide how much you want to give. That's absolutely fine. Um, and then, but, you know, for free, you can get here, the, these is the, 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 this is the last class. We had a storming class about science last time. You can download the notes here for free. Um, I'm also adding a new feature, which is as well as downloading, you can access the lesson on the website. So when we did our lesson on books, if you're on your phone, maybe you don't want to download it, um, in which case you can just come up here and you can uh, watch or read or follow the lesson um, here, right? If you want to find out idiomatic expressions, there they are, all about reading. So that's it. That is the uh, the website. So let me move back to me. <laughs> okay, excellent, good. So a big welcome to everybody here, right? Let's see who's in the house. From Bulgaria, hello, Vesela. Great, nice to see you. And Sukprit Danjal, Hung Nung Xuan. Hello, hope I've pronounced that close to correct. Daniela from Indonesia. Hi, Selena, nice to see you. Great. Hardeep uh, Nakul Pal from the UAE. Brilliant, nice to see you guys. And uh, Ola Bisi, hello, Neha. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Very, very well. Very um, sprightly today. Um, let me get rid of that ticker. It looks like the breaking news coming across the bottom. So listen, guys, today, most important thing, right, is we're looking at which finger? That finger. Mobile phones, right? That's the topic today. We're going to be looking at something like this, right? Mobile phones. What do you use them for? Um, we'll talk about mobile applications or apps, as we call them. We'll talk a little bit about texting and basically lots of language, vocabulary, maybe a bit of grammar, um, and some model answers where I, at the end of the class, I ask you to ask me any question about mobile phones, and I will try and give you a kind of an answer. <laughs> You're thinking, right? Why, Keith, have you got such a fuddy-duddy, old-fashioned kind of cover to your phone? Not very trendy, right? 
But the reason is, this is quite big, right, for the hand. And uh, when I first bought it, well, about a few months later, I, I was getting out of the car. I had the phone in one hand, the car keys in the other, a bag in the other. And which one did I drop? The phone on the floor shattered the screen. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, <laughs> shattered the screen. How much is that going to cost me to repair? So, and it, you know, it, it's not cheap um, getting your phone screen repaired in Spain, at least. So after that incident, I bought this old fashioned thing and it's covered and it's great because I have dropped my phone since, but it's protected. Nice. So that's it. Mobile phones. As we're beginning, um, by the way, can I just say a huge thank you to those of you who have made a donation to, to help me with my work. Really, really appreciate it. So a big heartfelt thanks to Mary Grace Duai, uh, Anna Sinsan, maybe it's Chinchan, I'm not sure, um, Pichaya Paranachua and Wawa Paing. Guys, thank you very much. It's a huge help. Do do appreciate it. Great. So let's see how you guys are doing. Just going to say hello. <laughs> Nice phone, Keith. Yeah, it's a lovely phone. I've had it for quite a while, right? I've had it for about, oh, I bought it in England before coming to Spain. So it must be four or five years now, right? So Sed Sevda from Azerbaijan, welcome. Nice to see you here. <laughs> Yesterday was your test, Sambal. Great. I hope it went well for you, Sambal. And if anybody is having the test uh, this weekend, you know, best of luck to you. Hello, soccer from Indonesia. Soccer as in football. No, <laughs> different spelling. Jintu, I'm very well. Thank you. I'm good. So um, let's begin, right? We're going to start up today just looking at a bit of essential vocabulary, right? So let me take here essential vocabulary on the topic of mobile phones. It's essential, right, I think, to be continually building your vocabulary. Um, every topic we do in the live class, you know, you should be making notes, but also activate it. Start speaking it out. Start using it. That's the key. So when you see the words, try and make some phrases, right, that are applicable to you or relevant to you and your life. And always remember the collocations, right? So when we talk about collocations, we talk about the words that usually go together, right? <clears throat> um, so, for example, mobile phone, to turn on a mobile phone, right? Oops. <laughs> turn on the sound. Turn on the sound. Not to open the sound. No. Turn on the sound. Um, turn on the phone. The opposite. Turn off the phone, right? So these are the kind of collocations you want to be looking at and learning. Great. Okay. Now, um, looking at vocabulary here, I came across this, this blog post, dictionary blog by Cambridge, the language of mobile phones, right? Which I thought that's quite interesting, the language of mobile phones. And I'll share this with you. I will throw this into the, uh, the YouTube um, thingamajig if I can get into my own YouTube live class. I can't. Why can't I get into my own YouTube live class? That is very, very strange, isn't it? There I am. I can watch myself. This is quite a strange experience <laughs> for me. Keith is now streaming. Keith is streaming very slowly. Oh very, dear. very strange, isn't it? Right. Let me throw this into... Oh, they've got too many things on my screen. You guys can check that out if you're on YouTube. Um, some language from Cambridge about mobile phones. What I realized is that actually when we come to talk about mobile phones, we are no longer talking about making a phone call, um, picking up the phone, hanging up. It, it doesn't really apply because we rarely use phones for phoning or calling people. We actually use them for all sorts of other things, right? Lots of other things. Um, so I just picked out a few words here. Smartphone, right? 
there are different things we can call it. A smartphone is the one with the screen on, right? So like that, and it's got all the apps. You can find different apps. I'll show you my apps maybe later. But like my dad, for example, has an old Nokia where you press the buttons. It's not a smartphone. <laughs> Mobile phone, yes. Cell phone, more popular in America, but all of these are fine. We can say things like battery. The battery is low, so you need to charge up your phone, right? So the battery is low or my phone is low on battery, low on battery. Notice there is a linking there, right? Low on, low on. My phone is low on battery. Try and say that. My phone is low on battery. Brilliant. Bat you, we can say battery or battery. Sometimes we say battery. A lot of people say tree, as in tree outside in the park. Battery. Ha <laughs> ha. Good way to remember, right? Battery. The battery is low. Or even my battery is low. But that might be confused as in your own physical body battery. <laughs> because you need to recharge your batteries. But I need to charge up my phone or I need to recharge my phone. You can also say, right, I need to recharge my phone. I need to charge up or charge my phone. Great. Now then, to begin today, great. My phone is get dead. Somebody's put that in. Let's add a few of these. Yeah. My phone or the battery is dead. The battery is dead. That happens, right? When you run out of battery. I have run out of battery. Great. Let me just change these and put it into run out of. That's one of those chunks you should really practice. Remember I talked about activating language. Um, so start speaking out. Run out of. Run out of. Just imagine it's one word, one sound. Run out of. I've run out of, I've run out of food. I've run out of drink. Mm. I've run out of battery. I've run out of patience. Lots of nice expressions. Or my phone or battery is dead. Duh, duh, duh. Doesn't need a funeral, but that's what we say. Right, good. Some nice expressions there. <clears throat> abba, abba, abba. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> yes, good CTN. Thank you very much. Run out of battery is the same as a dead battery. The battery's dead, basically. My phone, my phone battery is dead. Let me share this with because this is a really nice example, right? Shima. Thank you very much for this one. Shima says, my phone's battery is dead. Now, this apostrophe S, we use uh mostly with people right so my brother's battery is dead but with things right we don't usually use it right so we talk about my phone battery is dead my car window is broken right not car's window it sounds strange because the car's a thing my car window um my phone battery is dead right Shima, thank you very much. That's great. We can share that with everybody. Nice. Excellent. So I have a question for you guys. Here we go. Here's the first question of the day. What do you use your mobile phone for? Right? What? And just give me one thing. I know you do lots of stuff, but give me just one or two, maybe, things that you use your phone, your mobile phone. Let me make that clear. Although very few people use a landline, right? Uh, we talk about, yes, landline. Just realized I should have shared that with you. Um, landline, cell phone. Duh. I don't have a landline. Very few people do, right? Actually, the landline is the fixed telephone in your house. At home or in the office, right? In the office as well, it can be. At home or in the office. 
landline, just to make that clear. <laughs> so let me skip back to the question. What do you use your mobile phone for? Write down in the comments. Let me know. I'm going to come back up here. I'm also going to have a drink. Let's see. What do you use it for? Oh, right. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to take the question away. You've all seen the question. We've got from Aisha, says, using social media. Adara, you're like my wife, taking selfies. She takes so many selfies. It's amazing. Right, for checking time, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, checking. I mean, we would say checking the time, Taohan. Great. For checking the time, right? What time is it? Sonia, how clever for online classes, right? Um, for calling, very few people do, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, surf the internet. So just to help you with your grammar, all of you, if you use surf, Help yourself by saying to surf. So you're never confused, right? To surf the internet. If it's for, for calling. So as Artyom says, for calling people or to call people, right? To surf the internet. So by adding the for or the to, you're making a better collocation. You're helping yourself with the grammar. It's just nicer, right? What else have we got? What else? Right. Right. Keep in touch with family or friends. It's good. That's absolutely fine. Um, very, very good. So you just to repeat, you could add to keep in touch with family or friends. Photography. Right. If it's a noun, we would normally say we would normally put in for photography. Right. We would use the f. Notice it's not for it's f. For, for, for photography. That's interesting. For f. For photography. <laughs> oh, English is so strange. For photography. It sounds like you've got a stutter. For, 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 for. for photography. Right. Thank you, Anaswara. Brilliant. Good. What else? Savita. For reading. Right. Kukdu vines. Interesting handle. For conversation. Right. For, for conversation. Lovely. Chechi, for browsing the internet, brilliant, good. This is nice from Ishmit, for passing on important information, right? Passing on. So I'm going to add a couple of these here um, for passing on information because that in a way is like sharing, right? Sharing information, sharing stuff. Let me just write this down and then I'll share it with you. <laughs> I will pass it on. Once I get the font right, it looks a bit strange. Okay, let me um, let me what? Let me get rid of Ishmit in a nice way. Let me come back to the this one. So for passing on information, um, so we're going to take emphasize the f right for calling friends. Somebody said for photography. I love that. <laughs> photography or for taking photos, selfies somebody who talks about selfies selfie mad i'm selfie mad <laughs> i'm selfie mad selfie mad it sounds like a name hello i'm selfie mad pleased to meet you what's your name selfie mad just means that i love taking fo uh, photos right i'm football mad right i love football i'm selfie mad um Great. So for photography, for t so bit of pronunciation, practice with me. Repeat with me. For passing on information. Good, but feel the rhythm. For passing on information. For passing on information. That's better. For calling friends. <laughs> for photography. For taking selfies. 
Right, good, okay. <clears throat> or, absolutely fine, we can say to do blah, 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 blah. To do what? To, what did we have? What did we have? To call, to chat. Somebody had to chat, great. Phone calls, geo, navigation purposes. Ah, right. To navigate, to navigate my way. This is a, a nice way of saying it. To navigate my way around, right? To navigate is quite a formal word. You're navigating a ship or an aeroplane, but we can use it almost metaphorically in your car, right? You use, like me, you turn on, you turn on this great, great tool which you probably can't see, but right, Google Maps, right? You go into Google Maps and you, this is where I live, by the way. That's me, the blue dot. Um, it's great, right? Ne this is to navigate your way around, to navigate your way around town or to navigate my way around a city or somewhere, right? So that's nice to navigate through the city, that's great. That's what um, Fong Tran Tan says. Now to navigate through the city. For watching your videos, great. So I'll put that as a two. It's both are fine, right? To watch, I won't put my videos. To watch, excuse me, it's the ginger honey lemon tea. To watch videos, to watch videos. I use it for applying to various jobs all over the world. Sumant, that's great. I use it to apply for jobs. I'll just put that in. Yes, why not? To listen to podcasts. That's another one, right? Another big one called podcasts. Right, excellent. So we can say for, for, or to, which of course is to. So just do the pronunciation here with me, right? Um, sorry, I wasn't sharing the screen. To, right? So just say this with me, to, not to, to, to chat. I use it to chat. To navigate my way around. That's tricky, right? To navigate my way around, my way around. To watch videos. I use it to apply for jobs. Great, notice the t and the f. I use it to apply for jobs, apply for jobs. Emphasize that apply and jobs. Listen, I use it to apply for jobs. Nice. To listen to podcasts. To da 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 da, to da 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 da, to listen to podcasts. Get that nice rhythm going and you can be dancing and speaking fluent English in no time. Excellent. Nice, very, very good. Let's just see. There's probably lots more coming up I've missed. Listening to ebooks, audio books, right? <clears throat> I use my phone to communicate my family every day with my family, communicate with my family. Great Facebook user. <laughs> yeah, great. For edutainment, yeah. Adnan talks about edutainment. It's a nice word, right? So um, this is something we... It's a combination of education and entertainment. Um, so when maybe my live lessons are edutainment, maybe, I don't know. It's education, but if it's fun, you can call it edutainment. Yeah. Great. For texting. Oh, that's the other one, of course, that I'm going to talk a bit about later for texting. Um, if you're in the Facebook group, you may have seen the uh, the article I sent you about texting Benefits of texting. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay, excellent. Some nice answers here. Nina uses her mobile phone to learn English. What a good idea. It's a great idea. Great. I'm just going to share a couple more things that I got here with you. Here we go. I use it to download trending apps. Okay, so remember this word download, to download apps. Trending is a nice word, right? Popular, fashionable, trending apps. I use it for texting, we've talked about. I tend to use it. So this is a nice expression to say, I tend to. Um, rather than saying, I use it for texting, 
which means really you do it every day. Maybe it's true. But if it's more sometimes or often and you want to show off your English, I tend to use it. I tend to use it just to get online. Right. Just to get online. It's again, it's very natural English. Um, I use it to get online. That's OK. But a native English speaker might say, I tend to use it to just get online, to just do this. The just is kind of saying it's not really important, right? Um, well, I just I just drink. No, I, do, I just do what? <clears throat> I just work out every day, right? It's like it's not that important. <clears throat> I, but maybe it is, but you're making it sound less important. So, you know, I tend to use it just to get online and surf on the web. <clears throat> Very natural. This as well, right? Some nice expressions here. It's really handy for video conferences. Handy, to be handy, similar to hand, means convenient, <clears throat> practical. It's really handy for video conferences. It's handy, it's easy to use if you like or to do. <clears throat> it's really handy for video conferences. Uh, or if you want to step up even higher level, right? Convenient down here, handy for up here, up here, top level, band nine level. It comes in handy for, it comes in handy for. What a lovely expression that is. It comes in handy for accessing Facebook and other social networks. <clears throat> so notice the four becomes f again. Follow with me if you can. It comes in handy for accessing Facebook. Oh. Hooray. Well done. Nice. Right. Um, or you could say it's the best way to play games. If that's the case, it's the best way to apply for jobs, somebody said, right? Or it's the best way to pass on information. So it's another way of expressing. So we're kind of taking our language up a bit, taking up to a higher level using these expressions. <clears throat> the main thing, as I mentioned at the start of the class, is for you to start activating this language Make little phrases that are true for you. So don't only repeat me and my examples. Change them so they're true for you. So when you go into the IELTS speaking test, you're already confident talking about you and your experience, right? <clears throat> lovely, lovely. <laughs> Let me just check how you're doing. <clears throat> yeah, lots of things there for studying. <clears throat> for my own purposes. Great. I join my online classes <laughs> to chat with friends. Brilliant. Great expressions. So let's move on. Now then, we're going to talk a little bit about mobile phone applications, right? Um, <clears throat> I wonder which mobile apps do you use the most? For me, <laughs> for me, what? I'm going to tell you later. I'd like to hear from you first. Which mobile apps do you, which is your favorite mobile app? Right. Let's see what we've got. Elham says, I have, Spotty, I have Spotify. Great. I stream music. Lovely. Right. Ashraf, YouTube. Sam D alias Charlie Chaplin, Facebook. This is interesting, right? We've got Chala says for online shopping. Me too. I have the Amazon app. But this one, look, Felicita, my phone is my companion. Isn't that interesting? The emotional role that our telephones are playing in our lives. Instagram says Ace, right? YouTube, quite a lot of you, YouTube. For me, it's YouTube. For me, it's YouTube. Great. Love that, Poonam. Thank you very much. Nice. WhatsApp. Yeah, Nia, I use WhatsApp. 
to get to stay in touch with my family much better than Facebook, right? Facebook is just too crowded. Um, WhatsApp, we have a special closed group, a family group with just, I think, seven or eight or nine of us. Um, and we just, it's extended family as well. And we just post photos and stay in touch because we don't all live in the same city. So WhatsApp. Hannah uses Ted. Love Ted. Nice. Any others interesting ones? Obviously, YouTube, Instagram. Telegram, yep, yeah, is another one. Nice. Neelish also has a banking application. Me too. I do online banking. Dictionaries, right? Online dictionary. Fantastic. So lots of different things, right? I've got to show you mine. It's, it's like showing your the inside of your wardrobe. It's a very, very private place. Um, I've got here Spanish, Spanish radio stations and French radio stations, which is great. I have my speaking avatar to make funny avatars that I put on the Facebook group sometimes. Google Translate up here, I always use to translate. The Guardian newspaper to do a bit of reading. The others kind of come together with... Um, they come together with the the phone. I've got the weather app. It's always good in the morning. I mean, I know you can like, look at that, 17 degrees in Santander. And my daughter says, Dad, just look out the window. And I'm like, oh, is it raining today? What's the temperature? Dad, just look out the window. Put your hand out, right? Wake up. Look up, Dad. <laughs> Great. It's nice to have daughters <clears throat> to remind us of the, you know, the important things in life, right? <laughs> So apps, brilliant. We've got different kinds of apps, right? We may be looking at games, language learning. Somebody mentioned dictionaries. Productivity. Do I have any? I don't think I have productivity apps. I've got a productivity app on my computer and it it's called Pomodoro. And it it's a clock so that every 25 minutes it rings. So I have to stop working, stretch my legs and have a, re a relax, have a relax, have a break. Stocks and trading, if you're into that. News, I've got The Guardian. Health and fitness, I don't have any health and fitness apps. Um, I just go walking. Music streaming, yeah, I've got Amazon. Audio books, I don't have an app. Dictionaries, weather. Photo editing, right, that's becoming more popular. Personal finance, I do also with the, the local bank app. So there's different kinds of apps you may be you may be looking at. <clears throat> okay. Excellent. Good. <laughs> if you're just joined us, if you're late, um go and stand in the corner. No. To let you know we're talking about mobile phones up there. We're talking about mobile phones, applications and texting and all of these topics. Right. I'm going to share with you just now a quick student question because a student wrote to me and said, Keith, can you answer this question for me? Tell me places where you cannot use a cell phone, right? Now, I'm guessing, obviously, this probably comes from a recent or a past question. Um, so I just brainstormed, right, with this student and said, these are some things that I'm thinking of. Maybe interesting, right? So places where you cannot use a cell phone. If we're talking about not making a noise or being a nuisance. Do you know that word? Nuisance? Um, a nuisance is uh, a pain, uh, a bother. Everybody's like, what? What? A pain, a bother, um, something <laughs> bad. <laughs> something uh, bad, being a nuisance. It's a pain, right? For example, what is a nuisance? Um, when I park my car, I have to walk 200 meters to get a ticket, to pay for a ticket, and then I have to walk back to the car 200 meters. It's a nuisance. If they had more parking meters, I wouldn't have to walk so far. It's a bit of a nuisance. So if we're talking about not making a noise or being a nuisance, examples I thought would be temples, uh, a church or similar places of worship, right? You're not allowed to take your phone because if it's ringing or you're speaking, 
you're interrupting the mass or the service. Some hospital waiting areas, right? Hospital waiting areas, a nice collocation. Um, similar places of worship, sorry, that's another nice collocation for you. The quiet zones of trains, right? I don't know in your country whether you have this, but in England, whenever I go back to England, you get the choice when you buy your ticket, you can have a regular carriage or you can have a carriage with a quiet zone. And in the quiet zone, you're not allowed to talk, be on your phone. Um, if there's a group of you, you shouldn't go there because it's meant to be a very quiet place. I think the idea is to let people study or work on the train. So no mobile phones, right? Quiet zones of trains. And of course, libraries. You can't talk in a library, right? Certainly can't use your mobile phone. So if we're talking about being quiet and not being a nuisance to other people, I thought these were some ideas. However, if it's more about not being allowed to take photos, because we've just said, right, we use phones to take photos, Quite a lot of museums, especially with um, original paintings or paintings for sale, so maybe art galleries, they don't allow it, right? You're not allowed to take photos. Let's say art galleries, especially where they're selling stuff, where they're selling pieces of art. Temples as well. A lot of temples, especially the Buddhist temples, you're not allowed to take a photo. Um, I guess it, there's a belief. I don't know exactly what the belief is. Maybe somebody can tell me. But I think it's something to do with offending the Buddha or the statue or the god, right? Something like that. Of course, airport security check. You cannot uh, speak on your phone. But what they're also worried about is that you're taking photos of the security area, right? Obviously, you should not be doing that. Similarly, passing through customs control. Um, and I'm thinking at the airport. Yeah, you're not allowed to take photos. And some government buildings prohibit or forbid it, forbid or prohibit phones. Right, forbid or prohibit, nice words, which means it's not allowed. Not allowed, yep. So they... Forbid or prohibit phones. And finally, kind of generally speaking, um, when taking an exam, of course, <laughs> otherwise, Oi, Ian, what's the answer to number two? Oh, right, brilliant, thanks. <laughs> Can you imagine school exams? So when taking an exam in many schools, right, in my daughter's school, they are not allowed to take phones, at least to have the phone in their hand and turned on in many meetings right um or at least we have to turn the phone to silent right in a lot of meetings people will say turn your phone to silent especially if i'm talking <laughs> right nice collocation to turn the phone to silent to turn the phone to silent right so you're not turning it off you're just turning off the sound. Brilliant. All of those, some ideas, right, about that topic of um, places where you can't use a mobile phone. Great. Let me catch up with you. Oh, yeah, a few added ones here. Brilliant. Let's bring these in. Um, Claudia says it's prohibited to use the telephone when taking off and landing planes. Yes, yes. Great. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Have any petrol pumps and gas pumps? Really? I didn't know that. Again, some of these may be different in different countries, right? Of course, Angchar, but I don't know how to pronounce Russian. Sorry, I have to learn Cyrillic script. I really don't know. In theatres and cinemas, of course, you're not allowed to use them there. That's right. Good. Uh, where else? Inside the plane. Petrol pumps. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, on the aircraft. When do we use forbid or prohibit? Really, you can use them the same. They're, they're really used the same. Um, I forbid you. I prohibit you. 
Yeah, they use the same. In conferences, yeah, well, that's true. When you go to a conference, you're listening to a speaker, a presenter, or a lecturer, then you should turn your phone off, right? Or turn off your phone. That's worth just making a point, isn't it, right? To turn your phone off or to turn off to turn off your phone right most not most a lot of phrasal verbs you can put the object in between the verb and the preposition or the particle right you can turn your phone off is absolutely fine you can do that or with most phrasal verbs, you can put it at the end. There are some when you cannot, right? But generally speaking, you can do either. What's important, though, is that if you use um, a pronoun like it, right? You must put it to turn, to trun, <laughs> to turn, to earn, <laughs> to turn it off, right? You must put it in between turn and off yeah you cannot say to turn off it no 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 right so that is this one is the smiley face right um oh come on give me a smiley face there we go you cannot say to turn off it no that's definitely not good okay to turn it off Good, just a little phrasal verb note. I think it's probably useful to know. There you go. Brilliant. Great. Um, Emmy, thank you very much with the big E. And I'm just going to mention, because this also, I realised um, this happened. When we're talking about technology, and mobile phones are a part of technology, we often cannot find the correct word, right? So... I need to charge up my phone. Where's the, um, where's the, oh, what do you call it? The thingy, the, um, right. Sometimes you don't know the word, right? Because I need to plug it into the, oh, what's it called? The, oh yeah, the socket, right? The charger or the socket. But the important thing is vague language is what you say when you don't know the word. And this is great for IELTS speaking because if you don't know the word, you can still say that this. You can say, when you don't know the name, excuse me, autocorrector, go away. You can say, it's a thingy, right? So when you want to charge your phone, right? And I was going to charge my phone, but I couldn't find the thingy or the thingamajig. You know, you need a kind of a thingamajig thingamajig great word thingy thingamajig or a thingy or <laughs> you can even say oops, hang on let me bring this up a whatchamacallit which is really what do you call it but we make it into a word whatchamacallit um i'm looking for the uh whatchamacallit and that's fine right um you can say that if you can find a way of describing it as well, that's useful, right? So I need my phone battery is dead. I need the thingamajig, the whatchamacallit, to charge it up again. You know, the, the cord that plugs into the wall? Yeah, the whatchamacallit. <laughs> or the what's its name? The what's its name? Which again means what is its name? The what's its name? It's very, very simple language, and it's um, it's called vague language up here, vague language. Um, and it's when you don't know exactly the name, but you can use this to get round it, right? So it could be useful, right? Thingy, just say them with me. Thingy, thingamajig, whatchamacallit, what's its name? Fantastic. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. Good. OK, um, what's next? Next is a question, right? Yes. I'm going to go on to talk about texting because we haven't talked about texting yet. We haven't talked about texting. 
Um, so here's a question for you guys. What are the benefits of testing? Hmm. What are the benefits of testing? Hmm. Write down below. Let me know. <laughs> Let's have a look. Benefits of testing. Texting through a phone improves your language grammar. Oh, that's interesting. Some people kind of argue against that. Some people say it makes our grammar even worse because we don't use uh, the correct um, kind of language. But that's, yes, maybe, maybe it improves grammar. Khaled off. No, do not swear in IELTS speaking. Do not, no. <laughs> um, right, we've got what else? It is sounding like an alien language. Yes, Shakun, I know. The the watchamajig. The watchamajig. Socializing benefits. So you can socialize by texting, right? Um, for express sentiments, right, Niha? Great opportunity just for me to remind everybody. Expressing, right? For, for expressing sentiments, remember? Great. Texting can be good for expressing sentiments, especially with the emojis, right? When you put the different emojis up there, it can be useful. But actually, I find it quite hard. I find it easier to speak out emotions. But I know some people like to take their time, choose the correct word. My darling wife, I would like you to know today... I'm very happy. And, you know, maybe you want to take time. Yes. Mercy. No, not yet. I haven't yet. Thank you for your question. This is good, Massa, to save time, right? Yes. Benefits of testing um, it, to save time or it saves time to save time. To convey short messages. Great. Short message. So you're talking generally, right? You're not talking about one message, Avani. So convey short messages. Uh, Elam says it's not time draining, right? Not time draining or time consuming. Yep, good. Uh, what else have we got? It's quick. Okay, it's quick. Good. Anything else? Uh, Amrit says texting makes communication faster and easy. Well, maybe yes. Yes, maybe it does. Uh, Wanru talks about the word can be recorded. That's true, Wanru. So texting, although texting is, is with letters, in many applications, we have the choice of recording a text, right? Right. Great. Anything else? Okay, Avam, this is nice. Good one here. Um, to ease the communication, I'm just going to add ease to, just to make it clear, because ease is a great word, right? Ease is the verb. Most people know easy. Not everybody knows the verb to ease, right? To make easy. To ease the communication between two people, <laughs> Avam, two people, <laughs> not two persons. <laughs> Oh, you were almost there. Almost there. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. That's great. Anything else? Right, Clara, you've hit the nail on the head here. This is a nice answer as well. Texting doesn't oblige someone to answer your text promptly right away. Calling a person directly, unlike calling a person directly, which might disturb and waste his time. That's right. So texting is less intrusive, right? Yep, texting is less intrusive. I'm going to start adding these up on the list up here. Let me just add these up. Give me a second. One. There you go. Done. So that's great. Texting is less, intrus less intrusive. Um, it's easier and quicker. 
Somebody says it's convenient. Do you remember that expression we had for convenient? It's handy, right? It's handy, right? The one about expressing emotions. Remember this. It comes in handy for expressing expressing emotions, right? You could say that, yeah? Great. Sorry, Clara. If that's your baby, absolutely gorgeous if it is. <laughs> Great. Um, let me get out the way. Or let me make this a bit... Hang on, a bit smaller. Yeah, it comes in handy for expressing emotions. What else did we have? It eases. Eases is a nice word. Eases the communication between people. Great. What else did we have? It saves time. So yeah, it's um, it's not it's not time consuming or time draining. I think somebody said time draining. I use that a lot less. Time draining. You can say that absolutely. Time consuming definitely. I think is a little bit more common. Right. Yeah, for sharing, it's, it's good. It's great for sharing important messages. So it's great for another nice collocation, right? It's great for sharing important information. Brilliant. It's great for sharing important information. Great. So we've got lots of things here, lots of things to talk about, about that the benefits of texting. Of course, there are some downsides of texting. Um, a lot of teachers are worried about students writing, that they don't write and that they don't spell properly, right? Possibly, because in texting, we use all sorts of strange spelling, right? For example, instead of saying great, or Janet, <laughs> excuse me. So we say we say this, right? Instead of saying great, we type G R eight great. Yeah. So the the trouble is teachers are worried that it's um it's not conducive to spelling and it's bad for people's English in England, right? This is the English teachers with the English students, very, very worried. Um but we're looking here at the benefits, right? The good things about it benefits of texting. Excellent. Lots of nice expressions there. Very, very good. Anything else coming up? To save time, to multitask, to convey a brief message. Yeah. Also, I mean, in the article I shared with you, if you're on Facebook, um, it did talk about, for example, in certain jobs like doctors, doctors communicating with patients through text message, um, it can save time. It has, it's useful sometimes because it's less, you're less exposed when you send a text. You're almost hiding behind the text. If you've got a video conference or face to face, you can feel unsafe or exposed. With a text, you're less exposed, maybe, or you can feel safer communicating with people, right? Okay, excellent, good. Now, Guys, I'm going to move on. Um, I'm going to share with you a handful of idioms before we go into the model answers. OK. So here's a handful, handful, right? Three or four, maybe five <laughs> idioms around this kind of topic. Um, so first of all, I've got drop me a line. So to drop me a line is to get in touch. We often use it with to send an email to make a phone call, to send a text message, right? Any of those, drop me a line, literally drop a rope or a line. It comes from the time, well, to drop me a line. No, I don't think it does come from that. No, forget that, <laughs> forget that. Drop me a line on WhatsApp when you know, right? So just drop me a line, which is, so it just means get in touch. Excellent. The next one, you can keep me posted by sending me a message on Facebook. Keep me posted 
is again is to keep me up to date keep me up to date just keep me posted right so you're doing your test on saturday i'd really like to know the result keep me posted just let me know keep me up to date keep me posted by sending me an email or sending me a message on facebook right just keep me posted let me know keep me up to date the great thing about texting is that it allows you to get straight to the point. You don't need to beat about the bush. Here you've got two expressions with the same meaning, really. Well, or the sorry, the opposite meaning. To get straight to the point is to go directly to the problem or the issue. To beat about the bush is the opposite is to talk about this and that and this and that and to go round in circles before you get to the point. So it's the opposite, right? To get straight to the point, right? Which means be direct, basically. Beat about the bush is to ramble, right? Is to be, be indirect. It's the opposite. Great expressions. Beat about the bush. The bush is like a small tree, in case you don't know. It's a very, very small tree. And if you're running around the bush, <laughs> you're going around in circles. So don't beat about the bush. Um, and imagine, right, imagine during the day that you have called your friend. Beep, 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 and your friend's not there. So you leave a message. Hey, yeah, Ian, it's Keith. Call me back when you get a chance. Cheers. And then your friend calls you, but you weren't available. And you get a message from Ian. Hello, Keith. Call me back. I'm returning your call. So you text Ian. And then Ian texts you and you call. And you're like, you can't get in touch. You're trying to get in touch. But with that situation, it's called phone tag to play phone tag. Tag is the game at school where you run after somebody and you touch them and go, tag, you're it. And then they have to run around and touch somebody, say, tag, now you're it, right? It's phone tag. Uh, last week and speak, we've been playing phone tag all day. <laughs> right, brilliant. Those just are a handful of idioms for you. Okay, excellent. Let me just check if you guys know any other idioms around phones or something similar. Let's have a look. Benefits of texting, brilliant. Yeah, good, good. Great, got to stroll all the way down. Beat about the bush, beat around the bush. Yes, beat about the bush. Yes, good point. Beat about the bush, beat around the bush. Yeah, both of those are good. So let me just update that. Beat around the bush, beat, around, beat around the bush. Good. Ha ha. Ping me up. Yeah, ping me. Good. Keep in touch. DM me ASAP. Yeah, buzz me. Okay, I'll just share a few of these. These are, this is kind of common language that we use, right, with um, phones. DM me ASAP. Direct message me. Yeah. Buzz me. Call me. Sarib. Good expression, but not really related to technology, right? Keep me informed. That's great. Yeah. Rincey. Good luck tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, to hit the bull's eye, uh, to go straight to it. Ahmad, it's almost that. Um, let me share this with, with this one with you. It's not quite that. You're almost there. To hit the bull's eye, and I put that as one word, to hit the bull's eye, is to, hmm, is to get it right. I think it's a hyphen. I'm not 100% sure. 
right? To hit the bullseye. So the bullseye, if you guys know it, this is a great expression. So let's just, let me take a moment just to help explain it. Okay, I can show it here. Um, over here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. The bullseye, right? It's one word, right, Ahmed? The bullseye, this is the bullseye. It's the center of the target. So if you hit the bullseye, um, then you get the right answer. You get it right. You get something right. So where are you to hit the bullseye to get it right? Yeah. We have another expression to hit the nail on the head, right? The nail is what you use to hang up the picture. And you take, so you put the nail, you take the hammer, and when you hit the nail on the head, you get it right. You get it just right. Uh, actually, I've just realized this has got nothing to do with mobile phones. <laughs> but never mind. Sorry. To hit the bullseye equals to get it right, um, which is the same as to hit the nail on the head. Okay. Sorry, I didn't want to get lost in lots of idioms, um, just those that are relevant to mobile phones. Ooh, right. Idioms, great. Guys, let's move on. Time is short. I'm going to move on to model answers. And this is the time where I ask you to ask me um, a model. No, I ask you to ask me a question about mobile phones. Maybe it's a question you'd like to hear a model answer for. Maybe it's a question you think, oh, this might come up in the exam. I don't know. Let's ask Keith. So ask me any question. Um, I'll take maybe one or two. We're going a bit over time, but I think that's okay. And then we can look at the answer. Okay, good. Let me come back. Model answer. So questions. It's so important to keep hydrated, right? <clears throat> right, here we go. Oh, yes, uh, this is a nice one that's come up quite early, but I think this is nice. It's a good question. Let's take this one. I'm going to put it over here. Great. Thank you for that. Okay. Let me just have a quick look. Those are some great questions, right? I love your avatar. That's great, Benita. <clears throat> so uh, let's, oh, sorry. Let me share this with you. Sorry, up here. Will books be replaced by mobile phones in the future? I'm just going to make myself a little bit bigger over here. <laughs> right. <clears throat> okay. Um, I've not even thought about this. Oh, my God. Um, come on. Wake up. Will books be replaced by mobile phones in the future? Um, to be honest, I think that's highly unlikely. Um, and the reason is, I think... Mm, a lot of people like to access both kinds of things. Um, so, for ex well, for example, right, I enjoy reading paper books, but at the same time, um, I also like to read digital books on the Kindle app on my mobile phone. So I don't think it's a question of either or. I think actually it's uh, it's going to be both but maybe we use one more than the other. And it's most likely that we're going to use mobile phones much more than we use the old fashioned fuddy duddy paperback books. Um, I think they'll go out of fashion, um, but I don't think they'll disappear. Hmm, right. I wasn't sure whether I was answering a kind of part three or a part one question as I spoke, but. Never mind. 
This is a great one. I'm going to take this one as well. Um, which app do you use most in mobile phone? That's a great question. And I think that's more of a part one question, right? I would say. I would say. Which app do you use? Do you use? Do you use, right? Which app do you use most in your mobile phone? Great. Okay. Great. Thank you, Hitesh, for that. That's great. Um, I'll take this as a, a part one question, so shorter answer. Um, which app do you use most in your mobile phone? Um, that's a great question. I've got so many apps, it's hard to choose. Um, but if I had to choose one, I would opt for Google Maps, to be honest, because when I need to navigate my way around a new city or even my own city here, I always use Google Apps, right? I think I've lost the habit of asking people the way. I just much prefer to use Google Maps. It's quicker, it's faster, it's more accurate. So that's probably the app I use most on my mobile phone. <laughs> right, brilliant. Let me just have a check. Last one. Ooh, any others? There's a lot of interesting questions here. Right, Lenzilla, let's try this one. This is quite interesting. When was the last time you got a piece of good news through your mobile phone? Wow, that's an interesting question. Okay, great. Thank you, Nazilla. Lovely. When was the last time you get, <laughs> get, with my American accent, get? When was the last time you get? You get, you got. When was the last time you got? Come on, Keith, pull your socks up. When was the last time you got a piece of good news through your mobile phone? Great. That's probably a, I don't know, part two, part three question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> right. Piece of good news, right? Hmm. Huh. Well, okay. Um, it was about a week ago and one of my students um, sent me a text message um, through WhatsApp uh, to let me know the result of their exam. So they had been preparing for this English exam. You may have heard of it called IELTS. And, and um, you know, she had been preparing for maybe three months. She had worked very hard for this test. Um, and then I got the message. I was actually, I remember I was at work at the time. I was... Um, in front of my computer when my phone pinged and I looked at the message and it said that she got the result that she needed. She was over the moon um, and I was elated that she managed to get the result she needed. And uh, yeah, it was a great piece of news for her and I felt very happy for her. So what I did is I immediately texted back um, to say congratulations and to you know ask her to stay in touch with me and just uh if there's anything more she needed then i'd be happy to help her so i think that was the last time i got a good a piece of good news through my mobile phone <sighs> right that my friends is that great that's a very good question right nice Excellent. Some great questions. Others, I mean, I won't do any more questions, but <laughs> how long do I spend on the mobile phone? Not very long, to be honest. I, To be honest, right, I don't like spending time on my mobile phone. Um, it makes me a bit dizzy, gives me a bit of a headache. I much prefer computer or TV. Um, so I don't use my phone that much, to be honest. Right. Great. Thanks, Nazilla, for your question. <clears throat> Some excellent questions there. I won't do any more because we are out of time. But it does leave us just five minutes to wind up with a quick kahoot. Um, 
a quick review of vocabulary. Let's take five minutes and jump in to do a very, very quick Kahoot, which will be a nice way to finish the class. If you don't know Kahoot, it's basically um, it's a game that we're going to play together. You need to get online because you're going to interact with me. Um, and I'll, t I'll show you where, but we'll play it together. You just need to answer some questions. There are four questions and we'll see how much you've remembered from today. So the website is Kahoot. We're going to play the classic game. Okay. So loading the pin. So you need to go to www.kahoot.it and put in the pin 18409789. Brilliant. You have to put in your name as well. Alibeth, thank you very much as well. Boa, I'm glad you like Kahoot. As we're waiting, uh, can I turn the sound down a bit? It's so loud. Turn it down a bit. Um, Kazan, some synonyms of to be honest. Uh, yeah, um, to be honest, honestly speaking, frankly, frankly, um, honestly speaking, I'll share these with you later. Frankly, honestly speaking, um, to be honest, straight up is another one, straight up. Great. I'll share more of that. I'll show you later, uh, Karshan and everybody, those synonyms. But good question. So how many people have we got? Well, we've got quite a lot. If you can't get into Kahoot, don't worry. Um, you can put your answer in the comments box. Brilliant. Lots of people. So let's start. Let's get the first question going. Phone. Right. Here we go. It comes in mm, for video calls. It comes in blank for video calls. And the meaning is it is useful. It is useful. It comes in. Just make it clearer. It comes in blank for video calls. You've got 10 seconds left. Yes, you're against the clock. Three, two, one. Oh, fantastic. Look at that. Well done, everybody. It comes in handy. 103 people got it right. Quite a few of you went for hand. Sounds right, but it's not. It's handy, right? It comes in handy. Brilliant expression. Try and start using that one, right? Excellent. Well done, guys. So <laughs> Yumi <laughs> Yumiko, how do you do that? Like for the last three or four classes, you've always started at the top. Do you have a special account with a Kahoot? <laughs> Morali is second. Jill is third. Right. Brilliant. Let's move on to question number two. Oh, sorry. What kind of app is this? What kind of app is this? So here, you have to put the shapes in the correct order to make the word, the kind of app, right? This is difficult. It's different from other questions. So you have to put the color in the right order. And then you can make, make a kind of app. Oh, and I've just seen the problem. I've just seen the problem. Is the random order hasn't worked. Oh, look at that. The answer's already there. Da, 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 da. The answer's there. Why? It should give you... Oh, I'm so annoyed with Kahoot. You can see the answer, right? Oh. 
Let's enjoy the music. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Listen, I, I apologise for that. I'm not sure what's happened. The answer's here, right? Music streaming, that's the app. What it should do is it should put these in a different order at the start, but it didn't do it. Oh dear, not so sure about that. Sorry about that. Let's move on. <laughs> Scoreboard, Yumiko is still there, but Gaurab has moved up and August D has also moved up to third place. Great. Question number three. Nowadays, we have a shorter and shorter attention blank. Nowadays, we have shorter and shorter attention blank. What do you think? Spicks, spams, spans, scams. <laughs> what do you think? Right. Nice one, Swati. Nice one. Patel, well done. Yeah, of course, it's attention spans. A short attention span. I realise I don't think we covered this in today's class, but attention spans on mobile phones are very, very uh, short, I think, these days. Right, OK. Where are we? Oh, Gaurab has moved up. Yana has come in second place and August D is up in third. We're going to move to the last question. Get to the point. Don't beat about the blank. <laughs> now, this one we did look at today. Get to the point. Don't beat about the blank. Don't beat about the bush. Exactly. Don't beat about the bush. That's it. Or don't beat around the bush. Both of those are great. Well done, all of you. That's really good. Let's have a look at the final scores. The podium. Oh, Augusti, third. Yana. So who is first? Gaurav, well done, my friend. Well done. Wow, excellent. Top of the pops. Nice. <laughs> uh, lovely. Well done. That's brilliant. So listen, guys, we're coming to the end here. Um, thank you very, very much uh, for watching. I hope you've learned lots of language, bit of pronunciation, um, and, well, idioms, collocations. These are really important things. The key is to activate, right? Activate your language. Start using it. Oh. Ali Beth, I hope I can meet you too. That would be great. Inas, congratulations. Very pleased for you. That's a seven in speaking. Well done. That's great. So listen, if um, could you save the live? Right. So you've a good question. Um, Adib, could you save the live, please? Yes. So this is what happens, right? The live lesson is saved on YouTube. It's also in um, it's also in what in the Facebook group. But if you go here to the Keith Speaking Academy dot com, and I'll just pass that along the bottom as well. Go to the free live lessons page, right? And that is where you can download the lessons. And there's the link here. You've got the link to all of the YouTube videos. The last one was on science. And you can also go there and you can download um, you can download the different things there. OK, they're all in there. There's loads of them. Hundreds of them. My, there's enough to study <laughs> at least for a week. <laughs> OK, so that's it. Um, if you are watching on YouTube at the moment, then please do remember to subscribe, turn on notifications so that you know about the videos coming out. On Sunday, I've got a live video, not a live video, excuse me, on Sunday, a recorded video. Um, and it's how to practice speaking at home alone. 
So if you can't find a teacher, you can't find a speaking partner, you're on your own, you can still practice speaking. I'll be giving you 15 tips and techniques to practice speaking alone. So look out for that on YouTube on Sunday. Okay. Um, that's it for today. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me. It's been a great pleasure. I hope you've learned a lot. Um, I'll be here same time next week, Thursday um, at 10 o'clock Spain time. Um, I'm looking at topics. I've got a topic, but if there's anything, a particular topic you're interested in, do let me know in the chat box below um, and just let me know any topics you would like to look at in future. But at the moment, I'm thinking about photography and photos. But I've got plenty of time. If you've got other ideas, let me know. Excellent. That's it for today. Let's turn off that ticker tape. Take care, everybody. All the best now. Bye-bye.